You're working in the emergency department today. You pick up the chart of your next patient. You read that this is a 55-year-old male who is seen pacing back and forth on a highway overpass. A passerby called the police. When the police arrived, the patient said he was thinking of ending his life. You went to see this patient. He states that he's been feeling sad for the past three months since he lost his job. He has been feeling low energy, decreased motivation, and decreased appetite. He sleeps lots. His support system was his partner. However, his partner broke up with him last weekend. Since then, he has felt that there is nothing to live for. He has no family or close friends. That he can confide in. In terms of psychiatric history, he has no previous history of depression or suicidal attempts. There's no history of anxiety disorder. There is also no history of substance abuse. There is a family history of depression in both his sister and his father. He said that since the breakup, he had been thinking about how he would end his life. He has written a note to his ex-partner, and has given away his belongings to the local Salvation Army. He had decided on the overpass because he thought he would not be seen. He said that if the police has not shown up, he probably would have done it. Right now, his only regret is that the police found him. He states that he has taken two Tylenols before he went up on the bridge. On examination, the patient looks sad. He makes little eye contact. His speech is quiet and slow. He looks unshaven. His vital signs is normal. He has no focal neurological finding on exam. He has no fever or signs of infections. He reports no delusions or hallucinations. After discussing with your staff physicians, you decided to draw some basic blood work. You also decided to draw some toxicological studies. An ECG is also being ordered. Your ECG shows normal sinus rhythm with normal QRS complex and normal QT. His baseline blood work is normal, and his toxicological levels are negative. You decided that the patient is suffering from a mental illness and needs to be assessed by a psychiatrist. You are worried that he is at high risk of harming himself. You told the patient that you would like him to see the psychiatry team. The patient said no. You discuss with your staff physician that the patient is at high risk of harming himself. You then sign a certificate stating that the patient needs to be held because of a treatable illness associated with potential self-harm. You explain to the patient that he is unable to leave. You discuss the case with a psychiatry team who comes down and takes over the care of this patient.